Well, Alex Bemrose adopted her son from Guatemala because she'd been unable to adopt here in the UK, and she's now an adoption campaigner. And Alex, just um, it, take us through very briefly that extraordinary complicated process that led to you uh, going to Guatemala. Well, initially we tried, we approached our local authority with a view to adopting, um, at that stage we were looking at adopting siblings from this country. Um, we were turned away from seven or eight, I think it was, local authorities, all on the grounds of our ethnicity. My husband is also white. Um, even though we were happy to adopt a child of any race. What do you mean you were turned away because of we, your we ethnicity? Were told, we were told by the local councils we approached that they were not looking at taking on any more white couples onto their books. Because the children weren't white? Because the children weren't white, exactly. Um, so we then went overseas, adopted Jose from Guatemala. When we came back, we went back to our local authority with the view to adopting a second child, but this time domestically, and we thought we would have better joy now that we were a mixed-race family. Yeah. Um, but we were turned away once again, also on the grounds of ethnicity. Um, we were told that we certainly wouldn't be suitable for a white child now that we had a child of a different ethnicity in our home. And when we said to them, well, what about a child from India, Africa, China, yeah. we don't care where the child comes from, um, we were told that we would only be considered suitable if a child from Guatemala actually came onto their books. So this is crazy, uh, basically. Yes. I mean, it's a system where presumably some sort of sense of, of uh, I don't know, cultural correctness or political correctness dictates the rules by which couples are able to have a child. Well, yes. I mean, I think in an ideal world, of course, of course it would be better for a child if they were able to be brought up by parents of the same ethnicity. But the problem is that the majority of children in care are black, mixed race and Asian, and the majority of people wanting to adopt are white. So there's you know, a complete exactly, dislocation. Exactly. Right. And you have now started, or you've helped uh, found a group, uh, Adoption with Humanity. That's right. um, you've been at Downing Street today. I mean, yeah. This is clearly a, a, a subject very close to David Cameron's heart. But he talks about a cultural shift. Uh, is it enough to make it a cultural shift, in your opinion? I think the whole system is broken and it's in need of some huge changes and I know that the government are fully behind changes and um, Martin Neri has been working with yeah. them as well um, and the, the, the reforms they want to introduce are fantastic insofar as they go but we don't believe that they go far enough. I think the, we believe that the problem is that there's no way of enforcing any new guidelines that are introduced. But it's not just the guidelines, is it? It's, taking, it's having councils taken over by the ones that are doing better. So, I mean, if South Tyneside has got a good record, then they're more likely to take over from your council on adoption services. Uh, yes, but the, I think the problem is that it's not just the local authorities, it's also yeah. the courts. There are so many delays with the courts as well. And you've got some good councils and we've got some you know, terrible councils. Yeah. But our, our view is that really there needs to be a national adoption authority which would oversee, it would be a regulator, it wouldn't be an agency, it would be a regulator that would oversee all adoption arrangements. And so take actually, it away from the councils completely? No, it wouldn't take it no. away from the councils. The councils would still do the role they're doing now. What, what it would take away would be the role that the Department of Education has in overseeing it, the role that Ofsted has in inspecting it. And it would actually ensure that these new guidelines or new reforms that are introduced are, do actually become fact and are listened to. I mean, and the courts as well, because the, 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 local, the government doesn't really have the power to to do anything about the courts. Right, so it sounds like everyone feels that their hands are tied by someone exactly. else. And exactly. when you were told uh, that your ethnicity was wrong, were you told that by people who plainly felt that what they were saying was ridiculous or by people who, uh, you know, had, had made up and enforced the rules? It's very hard to tell, really. I mean, there was one social worker who said to me um, that the, the three hardest problems that our, my husband and I were going to face was that we were white, we were middle class, huh. and we were a heterosexual couple, which is crazy, really. So I think, I think there are some social, social workers that probably completely disagree with the system, but they're following the system because that's what they have to do, or that's what they're told from their superiors. Alex Benbrose, thanks very much. Thanks for uh, Thank putting it to us so, um, so clearly. Now, barriers preventing white couples from adopting children from different ethnic backgrounds are to be removed. The Children's Minister, Tim Lawton, said the number one consideration should be whether the parents could provide a good home for the child. He says he wants to encourage a cultural shift among social workers. Well, let's talk more about this. With me here in the studio is Alec Bemros, who adopted her son, Jose, two and a half years ago from Guatemala. Thank you so much for coming in to speak Thank to you. us. Why don't you tell us a little more about how you went about adopting your son and why you chose to go where you did? Well, initially we um, applied to our local authority to try and adopt domestically within this country. 
Um, we set, spent six months trying to adopt from within the UK, and we just came up against insurmountable barriers, really largely due to our ethnicity. Um, we were turned away by several local authorities without even an interview, just saying that they weren't accepting any more white couples on their books. Um, and that really it was due to guidelines at the time that a lot of them were following or have been and are still following, I understand, um, saying that children should be brought up in families of the same ethnicity as so, themselves. So they were quite open in terms of Oh yes, oh yes, completely. That's what we were told. And so after six months of really you know, not getting anywhere, we went overseas and adopted Jose um, from Guatemala. And then following that, once he was settled, we went back to our local authorities saying, that now that we're a mixed race family, presumably it would be easier for us to adopt a second time um, a child, once again, of any ethnicity. We didn't have a preference both the first time and we went, you know, we went back a second time. And I was staggered by their response, which was that um, now we certainly couldn't, wouldn't be um, considered for a white child, whereas before we would have only been considered for a white child. Um, and not only that, when I said, well, what about a child from India, Africa, China, or anywhere else? Um, we were told, oh no, we would only consider you if we had a child from Guatemala on our books or a child of an uncertain ethnicity but who looked Central American. Um, and so really I was sort of so incensed by this that um, you know, I wrote a, wrote a book called Our Son From Afar um, which has just been published and um, tried to start a campaign really to try and change that system. And I know that you Minister who we were talking about there. Yes. In terms of uh, his guidance now, what do you make of the position change? Well, I think it's fantastic news. I mean, I, I was over the moon to hear it, to read it, the, about it this morning. Um, my only concern is, is that it will actually be followed through. Um, I think that the views in local authorities are fairly well entrenched and have been for a number of years. And I think it's very important Yes, it's interesting. I mean, in the, in the quote I read in the introduction, he was talking about the next phase of this uh, is to change the, the mindset. And, exactly. and as you say, exactly. this has been in operation now for, for quite a while. Yes. In terms of why, though, it is in operation, I mean, uh, it's because of a thought process that basically went, if you adopt from, say, another country, another race, there would be cultural issues that perhaps would be difficult to work their way through with the child. Do you not see any merit in that sort of argument at all? I, I do, I do, and I think in an ideal world, if you had a little Jamaican child that was available for adoption and you had a Jamaican couple that wanted to adopt the child, of course, that, that's the, the best situation. But where the majority of people wanting to adopt are white and the majority of children in care available for adoption are black or Asian or, or mixed race, um, it, it's surely got to be a better alternative than them languishing in care and being moved from foster home to foster home um, throughout their lives, which seems to be, you know, the case at the moment. Just, just a final thought then. What do you say, I know your son's about three and a half, is that right? Yes, what, yes. what are you planning to tell him about Guatemala and how he came to you? Well, we already have, and I think this is also very important if you're bringing up a child of a different ethnicity from a different country, is that you don't just bring him up as a, as a British child who knows nothing about where he came from. I mean, Jose, even though he's only three, already knows he was born in Guatemala. He has lots of Guatemalan things in his bedroom. Um, you know, if he sees a picture of a volcano or in a book, he'll say, oh, there are volcanoes in Guatemala, I came from Guatemala. And he knows we're already introducing aspects of his culture. And I think that is very important. Well, Alex Memos, thanks for coming in to talk to us. Thank, Thank you. you.